Hello, good morning. Thank you for coming. Um, let's start. My name is Ivan Pedrazas. I work at Docker as a principal engineer. I've been doing distributed systems on Kubernetes and lastly, more focused on understanding complexity and YAML. Um, this session today, it's, it's a vessel of feather. So I hope that you all can contribute. Now we have a microphone and if you can get a little bit closer to <laughs> everybody, it will be easier for me to, to handle the microphone. Thank you. Um, so I have, I have like six slides and then we can just talk, what's the point? Um, what is a platform? This is a definition I really like that Evan wrote and it's about these self-service APIs and tools and service and the two things that usually people miss are the, the knowledge and support, right? Um, we, can, we can go over what we think is a platform. Um, I think that right now, so I was at KubeCon Valencia and, and there was a lot of talks about platform and platform engineering and it's the new SRE. And I think that, that there's a lot of questions that we need to answer and we don't have many of those answers, I think. That's why I thought that, that doing the session would be good. Try to see what the real feel for platform engineering is. Um, I think there are two things that are very important right now in, in the platform engineering. To baseline the, the language, like backstage as this framework to create developer platforms and team topologies with the with the different team, teams formation, like the platform team, the stream align, the enabling thing, and blah, blah. Um, speaking of backstage, at four o'clock there's a, there's a talk by Susan. So if you're interested in, in learning more about backstage, you can, you can go there. Um, what else is the other thing that, that happens that is the cognitive load. Cognitive load, it is not complexity, it is perceived complexity by the person and, and you have these three kinds of knowledge, right? And, and it's important to understand that this one, that I will not pronounce because I cannot, um, is the one that is basically the throwaway knowledge. There's a thing that usually you cannot take away with you if you change context. Because it's how, how we do deployments in Docker is different than how you do deployments in, in your organization. The constraints of the context are different. The patterns might be the same, but and, and that's it, like, like it, I really hope that, that you all contribute. I ask Brian, I don't know if you know um, Daniel. Um, Mr. Brian put this tweet and, and he's been very active asking about, about platform engineering. So I asked him if he could give us um, a few questions. I was hoping that he was going to come, but, but he did not manage to come. So like these are the three things that he's been asking. Um, yeah, I, I don't, I don't know if, if we want to answer this now or not. Um, this QR code will send you to this HackMD that I think that we can use to put all the points and, and keep them as our log for the session. So you can, you can use a QR code and, and access that. But um, yeah, who wants to start? Who is, who is building a platform here? What is a platform? What are the pains that you have in your organization? Yeah. We have the microphone, so like, oh, like I, c I can repeat your comment. If you want to make a comment, I think it's easier if I get the microphone and just hand it and, and then you talk, right? Um, let me come. Who wants to start? Do you want to start? Oh. Come on. <laughs> um, I think one of the biggest issue uh, is trying to sell the internal platform. Uh, if you just created even the PLC platform and integrated with your uh, internal APIs, different tooling, is to sell this to your developers. That's one of the biggest issue we're struggling with. Um, and uh, upskill up them. <laughs> and yes, <laughs> we're building, we're spending the time uh, currently even uh, on the way learning Go. So already for a uh, few years, I would say. So our team is the seven, seven engineers at the moment. 
Um, so that's one of the biggest things. Uh, yes. The another thing I see, and that's another question that I, I would like to highlight and maybe to discuss with someone else, is every single company, they create their own platform. Every single company. And uh, it would be nice to define some standards around it. I know maybe it sounds awkward, but it would be nice to just uh, that, well, so that developers could, you know, easily to be onboarded to this internal platforms, no matter where they're working. That would be nice, just to define standards, maybe inputs, maybe a UX as well. Maybe that, like a common API for them, right? But a standard and an interface different, right? Yeah. I, I think that that is, a, like, we suffer from not having a very well-defined grammar or language. Like, when you talk about standards and you think about interfaces, mm -hmm. it's different, right? Like, like these, these self-service APIs. Who, who has, has built self-service APIs here? Who has wanted to build self-service APIs? What is one of the first things you have to think when you are doing this? Fine internal standard. <laughs> so like you have you have the API that has to do whatever it has to do, right? Like that's a given. But but I am the consumer. I'm going to use your API. I need to do something. I need to know if I can use it. So I need to have certain observability around that service. If you don't give me that, it's very hard. And and this is, by the way, it's, it's really difficult. Like I don't remember which KubeCon it was. It was in in Copenhagen. I was there and. My classes were not building. I was going GK to create my classes. It's not working. It's not working. And it's because they didn't have capacity. And I didn't have a way of checking that there was capacity available for me to do it. Right? Since that moment, <laughs> when I have to build an API that you're going to do anything, creating this or creating that, I will, I will let you do things like, can, can I do it? Do I have the permissions to do it? Mm -hmm. Do I have? The capacity, like do I have the the money or the machines or whatever resources do I need, right? It, it is it is something like oh I didn't I didn't think about that because we, when we're building the interface we think about what we have to do and usually we forget about the UX the user experience, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, importance to define your internal standards and in those inner source culture as well. So that uh, you know, not one single team working on this internal beautiful API, but maybe several different teams, and they could collaborate. So maybe other questions. So as as anyone um, read this this Reddit thread, no, it it was it was <laughs> at some point it came and like oh wow, and it it is classic problem that we have, that we build something and then people do not adopt it, right? Why is that? There's a whole thread of people talking and then it, it drills down to, if you do not ask your customer what do they need, then you will build something that might or might not be what they want, right? And this is the bit that, that it's important to understand when we talk about cognitive load. What is the cognitive load thing? I don't know. Uh, here, here, there, right? Like, like cognitive load is, is what people know, right? And, and the more that they don't know, the harder it gets, right? So it, it is, I have a graph. <laughs> You can you can say like like it it behaves a little bit like this like like a logarithmic function, right? Like okay, this is my time. This is how much I can learn. At some point, you get saturated. You cannot learn anymore, right? There's there's different strategies and and team topologies helps with this, right? Like with, when we talk about these teams, it helps. Like like <laughs> this is, this is my life. Complicated. Right? But you have this stream line. These people are building something, and now they come the enabling team, and the enabling team is going to do something, right? Like for example, if we have this model, this is how my team is going to to be able to learn. I can shift it, right? Now I bring the expertise that we need to deliver whatever, 
Right? But, but it is very important to understand that delivery is one thing and upscaling the team is different. Right? Because this is going to help with delivery, but, but when <laughs> this other team leaves, you will be again here or even worse because the team has got used to have this SRE or this person who knows. And now when they leave, boom, there's, there's the void of, I don't know how to do it. And this other guy was doing it and now he is not here and I'm in trouble. <laughs> and all the time that he was here, I was very busy. So he was doing stuff and I was doing my stuff. Right? So you have, you have to understand these this kind of models, right? Talking, talking to, the, to the customer is very important because what is very important is that they understand what you're going to do. Like there's, there's something which is the golden path, right? Like, uh, where's the golden path here, right? Have you heard about the golden path? No? Golden path is basically the predefining these, these ways of doing things. We're going to do deployments in this way. We're going to do building my images, I'm going to deploy to Kubernetes, I'm going to create this static website in this way. I have to go to, to my portal and I have a, a very easy way of doing it. But that, that's the whole point of, of Backstage, is having these systems where people can go there and access to all the information that they need to do my job. And so it's just not having a dashboard. It's not a wiki. I'm like, okay, we have Confluence, we have Jira, what else do we need? That it's not the point. But then, and, and one of the things that happens when you adopt Backstage, right, like this is, this is a little bit like the model. I put the slide because this is the bit that people miss a lot. You have, in your company, you have all your services to do all these things. Now you're going to bring them in, into, into a portal. You have two options. You can couple it here when you create your plugin, or you can create a proxy. So you decouple the platform from the, from the service. You have to bring the tools, you have to bring all the things here, like the service catalog or all the stuff that you might need can be here, right? So one of the problems we have at, at, at Docker is that we have teams and we need to have a dashboard that, that, that can show you the, the pull requests, right? Now, pull requests by team is something that you can try to categorize. Like, like backstage with, with this service catalog has a way of saying, like, okay, you are this team and like, what happens if your team has to deal with a repo that does not belong to them? Uh, okay, it's not going to be in my dashboard. And so we need a way of, of being very flexible here. Now you build a service that is going to populate all the pull requests for your team. And your team says, yeah, but half of the pull requests are in these other repos that we don't, it's like, okay, now, now what? Right? It's, it's this, the discount that we have, what they're asking and what we build, sometimes is not aligned because constraints and things. I would think about, about that, like bringing you services, bringing you tools to one place, right? So in Backstage, I can go to Backstage. Backstage. I think I think there are demos here that we can. Uh, I don't want to work. I, I know that there's a demo somewhere. Ah, it's because if I put my glasses, I cannot see you, and <laughs> if I don't have my glasses, I cannot see the screen. <laughs> So this is backstage, right? Like, like, and here what happens, you have, you have the catalog, right? You have your components, and then you have your APIs, right? And then you say, oh, you, I can make it bigger if you want. A little bit bigger. Right? So like, okay, the API, the pet store API. Uh, I can do tech dogs at definition, right? And, and now it, it's, it's like, like the whole point of this is to understand how things are related, right? And oh, it's not loading this. Let me get another one. So you can you can see this kind of thing. So I, I'm a new person in your team. I come here and say, okay, I have all these things. 
And you can, you can do things like this is the CI CD, this is the API, these are my dependencies, my documentation, to do's, whatever plugins you need to do, right? Like all these things are plugins and same thing here. Right? Like, like you're basically building the system that, that you need for your organization. We will need CI and CD. We will need managing dependencies. But the way that you do it and the way that we do it is different. Do we need the standard? Probably. Do we need common interfaces? Yes. Right? And that's the point of you can you can try to use the the catalog definition of backstage, if it maps your organization. If not, it's okay. You can create the proxy that transforms that into the backstage, backstage or whichever system you use. Right? That, that's the whole point of this. Is now the cognitive load that I have when I join a new team is way smaller because everything is here. Right? And, and you can have ways here of like seeing your application in this Kubernetes cluster or this application in, in this or that cloud. Right? And, like, and then you have the templates. When you come here, where it is the new thing? Uh, explore? Yes. Well, there's one option that you can create um, new components. And, and the whole point of this is that you can create these templates. That it's going to go to GitHub and create a project with the different artifacts that, that they need, right? And they have to wire up Terraform, for example. Let's talk about Terraform, right? <clears throat> so you want to publish a static website, right? Like <clears throat> the user experience can be, I come here, I go to my template, I click in the button to create a new, a new um, static website. It asks me a few things name and, and not much else. And that thing goes and creates a GitHub repo and creates a service going to the pull request into the, the repo where we have our Terraform, right? That's, that's a model that you can have. Doesn't mean that you have to be like this. It can be completely like, I have a way of calling that or creating a, a Jira ticket for the infra team to do whatever they have to do. And the point is that the user comes, clicks the button, and that's it. And so you, you are, simplifying the process. What else? Um, <clears throat> how many of you struggle with, with the Reddit, Reddit problem? Like, I build this, people are not using it. People don't know how to use this. People do not understand I am. Nobody understands I am. <laughs> what is the most painful thing that you have in, in in your day today. Not with your team, but with the others. So um, I really uh, can identify every of the points described on the Reddit <laughs> post <laughs> in my company. So um, the, the idea of, I guess, the idea of, of these new platforms is just to make the things easier but uh, <laughs> yeah, but but I feel that the the complexity of creating automatic flows for everything you need to do is really high. So I mean, every of us are starting uh, from the learning mm -hmm. to the uh, developing to deploying uh, and so on. But this flow change and the complexity of uh, having everything in sync is high. Mm -hmm. So if the, I, I don't know backstage at all, but if you are not able to synchronize every step in the right way, that would be also a, a problem. Yeah. And, and what happens if that change? Are you able to, to deliver like both uh, behaviors? So this is my main concern about that. So I understand that we need to do something, <laughs> okay. but I'm not sure if, if that is the, the right okay. path. Yeah. Sounds like dependency, yeah. Sounds like a common dependency issue and versioning as well of your, of your internal APIs. And that's something we, uh, we're also struggling with. Yes, if you create the platform, you also have to support different versions. 
and obstruct this uh, in your internal platform somehow. That's one of the biggest issues, yes. Uh, another one, uh, something I see from developers, they don't understand RBAC authentication. And that's in the secret in the secrets management, that's a completely, completely usually. Even having the Brownback sections, uh, KT for specific teams, it's really tough. It's something, something really, really hard to abstract. And mm -hmm. I, I'm not sure how to, we're trying to do that, but that's a, that's a difficult challenge. <laughs> so like, like with secrets, for example, who's just struggling with secrets? If you don't raise your hand, I don't believe you. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the issues that we have is that like this shifting slash pushing left, or like, like we are basically giving the keys and the locks to developers and say, now you manage this. And you have to put the right locks and the right keys in the right places. And of course, they should not have to do this, right? Like why secrets is a developer concern? It shouldn't be. Yeah, ideally, it should be open ID and no IDC, so but we end up with managing our back here and there. True, but that's slightly different because we're like, you will need to have secrets, but yeah. you have to yeah. define the key. As a developer, you define the key. This is the key that I, my application needs. I'm going to consume this security information through this key. That's it. That's, that's, that's the interface that, that they create. I like that this is how I consume information. What happens is that then, historically, we say now you own the process of managing the keys and the locks. So from development to production, it is your problem and you have to do it properly. And they do not understand all the constraints, all the different environments, because it's a lot, right? It is, it, what, what's happening with the shift left is that we're pushing so much information and content into one place that the logarithm thing, like it, it saturates and like, yeah, whatever, right? So you have to start thinking slightly different. The golden path is not going and, and building all these things. It's going to them, it's like, okay, where, where are your pains? Like what, what Daniel was saying, like, what are your pains? Not, <laughs> not my pains. I mean, like, it's, it's not about me writing Terraform, it's about what is the problem that you have. And then they will say, doing this is very slow, or I don't understand this. It's tricky because people usually do not like to say, I don't know this, right? They will not tell you directly, unless they're very comfortable not knowing, like me, I'm very happy to say, I don't know, <laughs> the story of my life. Um, Unless they're very comfortable, they will not do it. So you have to be aware of this. Like you cannot ask, like, do you know this? Uh... Yeah, that's why we're trying to abstract these things, uh, providing the internal platform. Exactly, but you have to abstract it in a way that they can understand, right? Yeah. This is, like, if I take you to a, to a restaurant where I was born, right? like I took a friend of mine, speaks five, five languages, not the one that the people in the restaurant understand. So it doesn't matter how much he knows, <laughs> he's not going to order food, because he cannot speak the language. I'm like, okay, now, th this, is, this is the situation, like, like, oh, this guy is very smart, speaks five languages, yeah, but <laughs> the one that is important is missing. So you can do a lot of very th funky things. I'm sure that these people did really awesome stuff, but they missed the point, it's like, your users cannot understand you, right? And, and the team topology is t tries to tackle this, right? Like, like this enabling team, this enabling team helps to help people and facilitate, right? Like it's, it's, about, it's about learning more than delivery, right? In, in, the, in the curve they put earlier, it's not about delivery, it's about people learning and feeling comfortable with not knowing, right? It's super tricky. Now we go and try to build a golden path based on what? And what they, and like we know what they need. Right? To, to be able to do certain things, you need to do certain, like you, you need to build the Docker image, you need to have the Helm chain, you have to have the Helm release because we're using Gitters and you have to do this pull request, et cetera. And like we know, but, but we miss the point is that they don't, right? And then we go like, how many of you have been in the situation like developers need to learn Kubernetes? How many? And, and what was the reaction of, of the developers? 
just like <laughs> crying, crying quietly towards the, the bathroom. They just flip the table. Usually they don't like it. Why? Too many information. <laughs> just a lot of information. A lot of kind of objects. Okay, that's, that's an option, like, like yeah. let's see what this gentleman what has to say. Be because they don't find it interesting at all. Exactly. <laughs> they don't like it. Sometimes even Docker is too much for some developers. Yeah, they like, the, I, want, I want just to, to focus on my code, right? Yeah. Great. Why well, I need to know how to build a Redis cluster, right? Like, well, because your application is using Redis. Yes, but it doesn't mean that you have to be an expert building these things, right? Like what I usually say is like, being a very good cook and knowing how to run a restaurant, two different skills. Sometimes you have no choice. You are a, <laughs> a cook and, and we wear many hats, right? And then let's talk about scaling. Knowing how to run a restaurant and knowing how to manage a chain of restaurants, different as well, right? So it's very different. And now we're asking them to do things that actually maybe they are not the right candidates for this. What happens? Historically, what happens with Dev and Ops? And then we create the Dev Ops. And like, what happened? Like, Devs will not understand operations. And Ops is like, I don't know what your application is doing. I cannot do it. You, and then the interface that we had was very, <laughs> document, let's put this document, let's, let's try to agree on this and that. The reality is that if we had a way of exposing the information that the other party needs, that's it. Because the thing is that you do not need to talk with the other team. If what they offer you, if you have enough metadata to make this. And the exercise that you have to do is to approach one of your teams and say, I'm going to automate something for you. Whichever is the most painful thing, I'm going to automate it. And then look at what do you do when you're doing it. You're going to go and try to understand what is the process that has to be done and what are the things. Or like, you need to have certain information to do the automation, right? That is the key, understanding that this is the interface between you and them. Now you're creating this, this automation or abstraction, right? And now life is easy, right? Monzo has a tool that, that deploys, and developers use that tool to deploy, but they don't need to know how the tool works. Yeah. That's a platform team job. They say, like, okay, look, this is your command. That's it. Now you run this, boom. I have, I have a Docker file that when you build a Docker file, it generates your Helm chart and your values file. You don't need to know anything, right? So the only thing they have to do is Docker build, and boom, they have a Helm chart, right? Like it's, it's understanding like, like what we're doing with this model is trying to remove that thing that they don't like to, to create the Helm charts. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think that anyone likes to create the Helm chart. But it, it, that's, that's a model that you have to think. Any comments? Any? Uh, yeah, maybe I just wanted to say that a few years ago we tried to, to build a small cloud platform for developers. And the first mistake that we'd done is like uh, automated the sandbox server ser service for them. So they would have a sandbox to play in, right? Okay. But in essence, they didn't care about that because, well, we were told by public cloud providers that developers should learn public cloud services. Mm -hmm. But in reality, it does not work that way. They don't care. So uh, they want the end result, right? So then we shifted our, <laughs> our but, whole but, uh, yeah, backlog. So you have, you have a sandbox system, right? And, and, they, and this is interesting because when you have a system like this, what you're doing is changing completely the constraints of that context. I don't talk about the environments, I talk about context, right? Like it can be in production, it can be this, and you can have three classes in production, that's a context for me. But like the constraints that you have there, constraints of dependency you have there, are different. 
from everyone else. And, that, and that's not how we learn. When we learn, it's like things work like this, right? When, when we are learning things, it's like, okay, if, if I'm riding my bicycle and, and leave my hands, I just have an accident. If I'm walking in my house and I close my eyes, I usually bang against a wall or a, or a door or step on the dock or something worse, right? And you, you learn this very quickly. And now, if you do the same thing in an open field, you can walk with your eyes closed, no problem. The only thing I've done is to change that context. So what you are learning, it's completely useless in the other one. And then, then the other thing you have to think is, why, why do they need to learn this? Why do they need to learn how to get an S3 bucket? Because for the developer, the S3 bucket is just a location. Like I, I put my, my things there, that's it. It's a bucket. Right? And that's the issue. It's like, no, they don't. We have a problem, which is we, we're not enough to be able to do all the infra that needs to be done, all the ops. And so what we have to do is to accept that it's, it's either us building a platform and building these abstractions and automations or just hiring track of people. Right? And, and in this model, in this model, this is what happens. You bring this team, right? This team gets embedded in the other one. Now it's delivering. Now the organization thinks, okay, I solved this problem. What I have to do is to replicate this model. I'm going to hire more people like these ones and put them in the teams. Now my delivery is much faster. And now we're hiring and hiring and hiring. It creates another, another kind of problem because we're not solving the real problem. The real problem is basically what I said earlier, which is this one. You're trying to shift, but you are not, right? You, you build it, you run it. Who thinks it's a good idea? Nobody? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Why not? So do you think it's a good idea? I think you can run it, but you, you shouldn't, for example, you should own it, not definitely run it. Okay, you own it. Yeah. Okay. It's a different, like, let me ask this gentleman. Sorry. I'm, 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 I'm sort of trying to construct an answer with, with the thing that you're saying because um, I'm from a, a slightly I've been developing uh, for a good 30 odd years and when I started developing you had to know everything. You had, you had no choice. And as I've grown uh, through my career I've continued to want to know everything and I find it difficult when I meet junior developers that are coming out of college and they want to focus on one thing and one thing only and they don't want to know how everything hangs together and that concerns me because I'm an electronic engineer from 30 years ago, so I understand how things work at an electronic level, and I, it worries me that, that our college students don't want to know that. So I'm, I'm of the opinion that you should try and know everything. Like, I get the point of the cognitive load, but each individual, uh, you know, we have an untapped uh, resource in our brains where we can take on an awful lot of information. We've proved that many times throughout history. So are you saying that we should just keep developers knowing a small piece of information? No. What I'm saying is you need to help them. You need to help them to learn. Now, and this is a tricky bit that usually people don't like when I say it. Each, each team is different. Each person is different. The cognitive load that I have and the cognitive load that you have and the cognitive load that you have, different. Because our situation is different, right? So the way that I'm going to learn Kubernetes, Go, Rust, Lambda, doesn't matter what, is different than the way that you're going to do it because you, you know certain things that I don't, right? So you don't have a unified way of learning. Everybody's going to learn like, like this. Now you have these people who have to go there and help them to learn. And what they need to do, the, the enabling thing needs to do is to understand where the other team lives, right? Like this is what they know, these are the gaps, gap analysis, right? So we're going to do this exercise to learn. Yeah, so as, as, as an engineering manager, I have an approach uh, of, of culture that I develop within my teams 
And one of those cultures is continuous learning and development at a team level. So everyone within the team is responsible for helping everybody else mm -hmm. on subjects that they don't know about. So I think what you and I are talking about in, in this case is very similar. But it, for me, that's a cultural thing, oh, yeah. how you approach that. Oh, yeah, yeah. So like, like an organization has these three, three dimensions, right? Like, like people, tools, and processes, right? And, and, and <laughs> you, cannot, you cannot do one without the other. You can look at that, like you can flat three dimensions in two, and right? we have the cube, you can look at it and like now it's a square, or now it's, right? but, but the reality is that you have these three things and they're interrelated. And changing one thing has an implication in the other ones. Changing a tool by itself is not going to solve your problem. Adding backstage is not going to solve the problem. The problem that, that these people in, in, in the Reddit thread had is not about the tool. Like the, the issue here is, is they're not speaking between them. Like these people did not talk to them. Like, what do you need? What is your problem? How can I help you? They didn't. They said like, oh, you're doing these things. What you need is all these bunch of Terraform or services or whatever. I'm going to write all these Pulumi code and now this. And then the developers are like, I don't know what you're talking about. Right? I started quite quite a while ago, right? Like I did something like like, like I, I wrote assembly code and and Fortran at the university. I'm, I'm a little bit older than look, but um, now people engineers that, that join the company is like, well, yeah, but when you started, it was much easier. There was no so much to learn. Now there's too much to learn. Like the saturation comes much faster, and that's okay. It's not about how much you have to learn. It's about choosing what is important. And we're not helping them. Can you pass the microphone? We have like three minutes. Yeah, I, I wanted to uh, maybe get back uh, on, on what you just said. And um, I have an electrical, uh, electronic background also. Uh, I'm an electronic engineer. And I like to understand pretty much all the layers that, um, that makes up uh, an application. Um, but I think it's it's not the case of everyone. And we are, I mean, if we get back like, yeah, a bit like you said, like 10, 20 years ago, um, the stack was much easier. You, you did not have to uh, bother very much about the infrastructure because it was pretty much manual, uh, handled by someone else, or you just created packages that you, you deploy and, and that was it. I'm con currently working as a consultant in a company that um, made the shift from this old waterfall way of working all the way to DevOps in a few months. So developers that has been working like 20 years just developing code and creating MSI packages, all of a sudden has to learn CI CD pipelines, infrastructure as code, Helm chart, how those communities works, and all those things. And it, it was very overwhelming for them. Um, they decided anyway to, to, to proceed in that direction, uh, but it, it, it turned out to be a real mess um, because they just get back to the old habits. Uh, what was automated was then manual, and, and, and I'm here trying to move forward. And I think platform engineering is a very good answer for that. Yeah, there's, there's something you have to understand because when you were talking, it's like, yes, it is true that now the architecture that is within, like the, the constraints that we have now are different from the constraints that we had 20, 30, 40 years ago. We don't have much memory. Our CPU was not very powerful. We were constrained in different ways. Now we have, now we have big machines with a lot of memory and, and so on. Right? Like, so it, the constraints change. Right? But, but the problem is always the same. We're trying to build and solve problems. Right, and that, and I think that that is the key. It's like try to look at things slightly different. Like, okay, it is true. Now, now I have more complexity because I have all these latency and networks and, and blah blah blah. And I'm not very familiar. I'm not comfortable with these things. But you have to be honest with yourself. I'm not comfortable with networking. I don't know much. Right? That's okay. The constraints are different. Like the same way that that we spend a few hours trying to understand how to reduce the the memory that that the mastermind had to do to be able to do it, 
it's something, how do I have to do to, to map the network in this way? Right? And I think it's very interesting that the whole space, the evolution and platform engineering is, is it has a, a place. And we need to finish. <laughs> Sorry. Um, thank you very much for coming. If you want to, to, to talk about these things, I'm, I will be in the booth, in the Docker booth. You can reach out or you can ping me in Twitter. My Twitter handle is here. No, it's not. It's here. <laughs> um, thank you. Thank you for your time.